fact, you contradict your argument. Oh, you God. talk of the removal of rights in how they live in society, yet now you speak of how they are needed for it to function in an ideal way. Ye gods, you're saying we should introduce these rights as law. Don't have to tell me otherwise. Could the right to life also be surmised of as the illegality of murder, the same for shelter or freedom from persecution? By your repetition of my argument, you invalidate your own. Quod et at demonstratum. Ooh. Any individual right does not necessarily remove individuality, my friend. You spoke earlier of literature and art. Is the character of the individual shaped by the rules of people they live by or by who they are? The moving individual rights then is equal centricity and not individuality. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to stop you there. We're running out of time. I'll pass the buck to the audience. Does anyone have any questions? Can I sit back and go? Eugenics. Well, eugenics is basically the practice of breeding specific traits in humans and passing them on to the next generation. Now, obviously, Plato's view is such that everyone yeah. is assigned a specific purpose in society. So, therefore, the two go nicely together because he would advocate the workers breeding more workers, the guardians breeding more guardians, the leaders more leaders, and so forth. Yeah. Oh. Why does Hobbes feel that we have rights? Well, Hobbes' view on rights stems quite, well, quite mainly from his belief in God and the fact that's also present in Locke, ironically, that humans were created as moral creatures and as such have inalienable rights as assigned by that said deity. Could you explain to us that the um, thought experiments which you maintain just that the people will act rationally properly? The bail of ignorance? Um, well, it was an idea put forward by John Rawls, the political philosopher, as a means of testing most attempts to suggest a better system. In its basic form, it suggests that the person advocating such system places themselves in the role of someone who's completely neutral, no gender, no education, no society, nothing, just with a basic knowledge of how society works, in a way. And then, by their anticipation of their role in that society, they could work out if the society was just or fair. Because obviously a correct society, as we understand, would be one where everyone would be in the same place on that <coughs> underlying thing. Can you explain Plato's view of society? I can you. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> Plato um, says that society is broken down into the rulers, who are the most intellectual, so the philosophers, the soldiers who would enforce the rules, and below them were the actual people. <coughs> <laughs> Why would you suggest that Function. literature and creativity would be stifled in a government society? Well, mainly because a lot of influential literature has come from people criticising the government. And therefore, if the society was so heavily governed as Epimachus here suggests, and this is merely a re echoing of Plato, I might add then all our extra present would be censored to such an extreme amount by the state that it wouldn't have any individuality at all. So you're not suggesting that just merely criticism of previously flawed states? Yeah. Okay, then you answer the question. In a way, yes, but also there could be the criticism that how do we know what state is the best for all previous states could merely be incorrect compared to what the current would be. And therefore without but the point still stands that without anything such as literature or art, a lot of the modern ideas wouldn't be present. Okay. Is that it? What's the main argument that we've talked about? What do you think it what's the the the, the screen oh, commercial then?